This video is about how to manipulate punch lanes to set traps, land counters, and control the opponent's output. Specifically, we're going to look at using defensive traffic to dictate, or at least heavily influence, the opponent's attack timing and attack type, which will both increase our odds of success with counter punches and allow us to settle opponents down as needed. Here's the basic concept. Whenever you need a break, create traffic using your hands to close punching lanes and occupy the space through which your opponent's punches must travel. When you're ready to work or you want to open for business, clear that traffic, return to guard, and give the opponent the space they need to punch. Of course, there's more to this than meets the eye, just like the give or take concepts we covered in the last video. And speaking of which, if you haven't watched that video, I recommend you do so now. Not because it's a prerequisite to this concept, in any way it's not. This is a standalone strategy, but because they work really beautifully together. It's also worth mentioning that just like the give and take, setting business hours is a concept, not an isolated technique. That means it can be applied in all kinds of different ways and used to set up pretty much every counterpunch in the book. Defensive traffic comprises the fist, palm, elbow, forearm, anything deliberately placed between you and the opponent to block punching lanes. A quick note on punching lanes, understand that every punch is designed to travel down a certain lane. That's what proper mechanics are all about, consistent delivery. And the only way to change this lane is to change the angle of that delivery. If I step off to the right before I jab you, that lane has now changed, even though the delivery of the punch, the shape of the punch, is the same. So in this way we can see that effective defensive traffic needs to be quite active, constantly moving to cover the new attack lanes your opponent's creating with angle changes and footwork. Taken to its extreme, or the end of the lane, defensive traffic becomes hand trapping, where I place my glove on the opponents to prevent them from using that hand. But up until you make contact with the opponent's glove, anything that happens from the time your hands leave the guard position and extend into the opponent's punch lanes can be considered defensive traffic. So when Norton extends his rear glove, his open hand pawing air for a jab that hasn't come yet, that's defensive traffic. But when Frampton and Canelo are backing away from their opponent with a long lead extended in a long guard position, that's also defensive traffic. No doubt about it, extending the hand towards the opponent away from the guard can be a liability. It also effectively removes that hand from play, or at least limits your options for follow-up offense with the new hand position leaving very little distance for a punch to travel in order to build up power. So what do you get in return? Why handcuff your offense to let the hand linger in empty space? What you get in return is the ability to close for business. Using defensive traffic, you dictate whether their window of opportunity is open or closed by opening or closing the punch lanes. For many different reasons, there are times in a fight where you're not prepared to do business or trade with the opponent. And in these instances, defensive traffic can buy you time by making it very hard for the opponent to punch. And compared to getting on your bicycle, by which I mean keeping away with active footwork, this approach keeps you more in the fight, more in range, and it also saves energy. Defensive traffic is not foolproof, and many opponents will still try to fight through traffic. But if you do your job right, alternately trapping and parrying and blocking and controlling the opponent, you can teach them it isn't worth it. Getting blocked early or parried or entangled in a hand fight every time you try to punch without even really coming close to the target sucks. And you're no real threat with the hands out anyways. And good opponents will recognize that. And when they see you take that position, that long guard, long parrying, traffic heavy position, and they know how hard it is to get around those hands, they'll often take the chance to rest themselves. Sometimes even disengaging and resetting entirely. So that's one great reason to create defensive traffic. It lets you close for business, giving your opponent two choices. Fight an uphill battle by punching through closed lanes stuffed with traffic, or leave you alone for a second. Take a rest themselves. And either way, you've achieved your goals. You've bought time, grabbed a rest, and maybe frustrated an over-eager opponent. But beyond this, defensive traffic can also help you set up counters whenever you are ready to do business.
So by now we know we can use defensive traffic to close punch lanes, closing for business, to buy ourselves time and make it harder for the opponent to punch whenever we want. This makes it a great option when you need a rest or when you need to cover a risky retreat, but it's also step one in a two-part trap you can use for better counter punching. As I said in the introduction, you can use defensive traffic to dictate or at least heavily influence the opponent's attack timing and attack type, which will greatly increase our odds of landing any counter punch. So let's discuss each in turn. You'll never have total control of your opponent's attack timing, but setting business hours by manipulating punch lanes can really help. It's very simple. Your opponent is way more likely to attack when the lanes are clear, when they have room to punch and no traffic to get through, than they are when the lanes are full. Thus, to some degree, we can dictate our opponent's window of opportunity or attack timing. If you're not ready to counter, keep those lanes closed. And when you're ready, open the lanes and invite them to attack on your time. The easiest punches to counter are those we can anticipate, and while anticipating and seeing the punch is a bigger subject, at least by setting business hours in this way, you'll be looking for the shot at the right time. When you control the punch lanes, you control the attack timing, and that makes it much easier to set up a counter punch. Controlling your opponent's attack timing is great. Controlling their attack type is better. Again, you won't ever have total control over what they're throwing, but you can control or at least influence the type of punch your opponent throws by using defensive traffic to take specific punches offline. Basically, closing certain punch lanes while leaving others open encourages the opponent to attack with certain punches, the ones you've left them which makes the task of timing and executing the counter that much easier. To get the best results, you also need to consider the range that you're at. So if I want to counter the cross the way McGregor is here, in addition to leaving the cross lane open, I will stand at cross range so my opponent feels comfortable throwing it. I'm not going to stand at uppercut range if I want to counter a cross. Anyway, let's say I want to counter the jab. Step one will involve me closing for business every time my opponent wants to get their jab working. As you know by now, you have many different options for creating this defensive traffic. You might move the rear hand up in a long parry position, or extend the lead hand out across the body, perhaps taking the L guard position we've discussed in a previous video to give you additional cross coverage with the forearm and elbow. Whatever you choose, you use that defensive traffic to close the jab lane every time the opponent tries to get it working. And after a few exchanges, some opponents will be just chomping at the bit to establish their jab, making them much more likely to reach or commit to a jab as soon as it looks available. So step one is really just about frustrating your opponent. Step two is to clear the lane of defensive traffic. Finally, giving your opponent that space to punch that they've been looking for you can tempt them even more by positioning yourself closer to their jab hand as you open the lane, or maybe even leaning the head forward in the way you sometimes see Floyd Mayweather tilt the head forward to bait a pull counter. But crucially, when you clear that lane of traffic, you want to move that traffic into another lane. I don't just want to open up every punch for my opponent. That would just be giving me control of their attack timing. I want to control the attack type. So while I am going to leave their jab hand free, I may shift my traffic over to cover their rear hand, denying them those punch options and making it much more likely that they take the opportunity I've presented and that they've been looking for. Another important note here is that you need to be prepared. The second you clear traffic off any punch lane, you need to expect fire coming back your way immediately. There are plenty of examples of this plan backfiring in the pro ranks because the fighters fail to do so. They will have great control of a lane, but then they will open that lane without really being prepared for the consequences, and then the opponent dives through that window of opportunity and catches them. So again, step two is about opening the lane, presenting the target you've been denying the opponent thus far, and perhaps using head position and footwork to make the target even more tempting. The opponent thinks they're pressing the advantage, but really they're attacking with what we want, when we want.
Step three is to commit to whatever counterpunch you've chosen. Suppose you wanted to slip the jab to the outside and throw the cross. Just like with the give and take concept, the second you read offensive commitment from your opponent after opening a lane, you commit to your own head slot change or evasive move. You make them miss and then you make them pay. This idea works for almost any punch. Like I said, pretty much every counter in the book can be set up or made better by setting business hours. Whatever punch you want to counter, close it off by crowding that punching hand with traffic or blocking the space it must travel through. Do this consistently over multiple rounds and exchanges until your opponent is desperate to get off with that punch. Then open the lane, inviting them to punch on your time with the punch you allow. Whatever punch you choose to counter, it'll be much easier when you're in control of these variables and setting business hours with defensive traffic is how that's done. <laughs>